I'm a member of the NT Field and Game Club. I uh, only joined this year. Uh, the first time I used a shot cam, I took it down the club, and a few guys were interested, and they said, oh, please post your videos. So I'll, um, I'll use this to post some of those videos. Um, just, this is not how to shoot, uh, or how to improve your shooting. Um, I'm a C grader. Um, my handicap is C9, so um, there's nothing I can provide in terms of advice. But I think like a lot of people, um, when we've been shooting and we keep missing, we keep wondering why we're missing. You know, sometimes it's nice to have a mate there to say, oh yeah, you're behind it or under it or whatever. Um, but you never really know, so that was the motivation behind getting the shot cam. This is my gun. As you can see, it's safe. It's a bit and solly, under and over, obviously. It's a field gun, so it's not a special sh trap shooting gun or anything like that. Um, I purchased it primarily so I could go um, waterfowl shooting up here in the territory. It's the gun that I'll be using to create all my shot cam videos. As you can see, the shot cam is mounted on the bottom barrel. It's around about six inches from the end. They recommend about three to 10 inches, but they also recommend to clamp it to the solid part of your cooling flutes. So I've got a, a cut through section there and a cut through section, so it's clamped on that solid section. So the main aim of that distance is to keep it on that solid section. As you can see, these are standard chokes. Uh, they were supplied with the gun. I primarily started shooting with reasonably open chokes. Was having trouble with the longer shots. Tightened the chokes up and even tried full chokes and three quarter choke for a while. Um, just basically concluded it was my shooting that was causing me to miss most of the targets. Um, I've opened the chokes and closed the chokes, but I'm going to standardize to a three quarter and a half choke. Um, and that, so that's an improved modified and a modified choke. So there it is. That's the gun that will be used for these videos. So... This first little bit, if anyone's been out to the Field and Game Club, you can ignore, but it's just trying to show you the drive up the road, uh, McMillan's Road, onto Farrar, and then Brand, and then you drive into the actual complex. You see them cut the shotgun shells sitting out the front. You go along the dirt track, and eventually you come to the car park. Once you're parked, you can walk along the path, head towards the club, just go by the toilet block and you've got a car park, car park next to you. This is the view from the car park. As you walk into the club, I usually head to the right hand side of the club. Um, don't have to. The club's got some great facilities, cold chilled water, some ice, places to sit and so forth. So it's nice to have a beer here after you've been for a shoot. And it's quite a picturesque little spot. So this particular video is about Novice Trap 1. The trap actually comes to you directly almost. Um, it's about 70 metres out. This video is just trying to show you what it looks like, but it's really hard to catch on a um, GoPro. This little section here is at full speed, and you'll notice basically that it's um, quite a quick shot. So, out of trap one, this is what I have been doing. Giving that a little bit of lead forward and a little bit of lead left. And what I'm going to try and do here is show you how you can analyse your shots. So this is at half speed. And if you go frame by frame, you can actually see where the shot goes through. So, in this case, I can see that the top left hand side of the pattern hit that target on the bottom right. So here is too much lead. And what I'm trying to show you here is a frame by frame view. 
you get three or four frames of distortion and then it clears up um, and then you can sort of like see the wad and pattern where it's going. That showed there was too much lead. So again, I took a second shot. It's almost like a different shot when it's falling and slowed right down. You can see the pattern there and you can see that the actual target falls onto that pattern and it clips it on the way down. So here's a hit. This one here, just trying to shorten it up. Oh no, sorry. This one was the same amount of lead, but it was also copying the lead through, or the downward lead. And this one, I've shortened the lead up again, and you can see that that's a hit. It's a slight hit, and I'll get another crack to be able to practice the, the downward lead. And this is giving it the right amount of lead from the back. So in summary, the video is about sharing my experiences with a shop cam. It's primarily aimed at the Northern Territory Field and Game Club members or anyone who wants to go and shoot out there. Um, hopefully you got to see a few of the facilities. The facilities are fantastic. Um, there's other traps and stuff around that are not shown in the video, which I'll pick up in other videos as well. Um, it's the, the video is not trying to tell anyone how to shoot but um, I have found that a shot cam has actually improved my shooting so I've been quite pleased with it. So it's early days with the cam I prefer the round reticule with more representative of the pattern um, rather than the dot or the cross. I did find that the cam was probably slightly out of calibration where the main part of the pattern was a little bit high in that big circle but I generally found that not to be a problem because you do the frame by frame on your video viewer and you can see where that pattern's gonna go. So um, I don't think that was too big of an issue. Missing. Missing is still a problem. Um, I'm about to do another video on novice, but trap three, which is a left to right. Me and a mate, we struggled. We went probably on four odd sessions and shot there a couple of times each session and couldn't hit a target for the love of the money. Um, we're now able to hit the target, so that's helping improve, um, or using the cam to help us improve. But if you're, if you're shooting and you're missing, you haven't really got uh, a point of reference. It's, that's one of the difficult things or one of the challenges of using the shot cam because it's not really telling you exactly how much you're missing something by. So if you've got a long shot, it might, you might guess that there's 17 frames before the shot gets there, or it might be 10 frames before the shot gets there, and you can't tell whether you're missing in front or behind. Um, if you do hit something, then great. Um, you've really got a good point of reference. Um, so that is a bit of a challenge. So the way I'm using the video at the moment is to review the footage. Um, I then do some analysis on it. Um, like the first session I went out, I, I felt like I was shooting low quite regularly. Apparently trap guns do that. Uh, next session I went out, I purposely tried to shoot a little high didn't really fix anything um, and there's probably other things that are coming into play in that particular regard and that's probably gun mount which is really really important um, so um, yeah so the theories you know you try them out you make a theory go out there you try it and see if it works what I have found though is that if you keep trying your theories eventually you'll hit on something and and get there so basically it was, a, it, it was applying some of the theories that helped me get to this trap one where I can quite consistently hit that target specifically about novice trap one what I found was as soon as the target comes out of the house if you lock onto it mount give it a tiny bit of lead forward and a tiny little bit of lead left then you I'm finding that we're consistently hitting it. If you miss the first shot, uh, it becomes a totally different shot. So the target pulls up quite quickly and then it falls quite quickly as well. So hopefully the video actually showed the amount of lead that you need 
to apply forward. Um, in the past, I've applied way too much um, downward lead, and that's caused me all sorts of problems. So that's just that's the end of the summary. The only thing I will say is that I'm pretty tech savvy, so I haven't found the technology side of things too challenging, but it, it could be for some people if you're not particularly tech savvy. So keep that in mind if you're thinking about investing in a, in a shop cam. Um, I'd like to think that if anyone's got any issues, I'd be hanging around the club, so I might be able to sort them out in that regard. So anyway, hopefully this helps. Um, I'd be keen to hear if um, what you've seen on the video is uh, informative and useful, uh, particularly in this one on Trap One. If you do like the video, uh, please subscribe, and with a bit of luck, there'll be a few more videos shortly. Sure, if I've got a Harley Davidson's are a pain in the ass. This is the problem with uh, not having a studio and having to film this on your balcony with having turkeys out there on the on the on the road and having Harley Davidsons and so forth.